Hello, welcome to the Woodsman Channel. I provide information and ideas for the design, construction, and furnishings of unique and one-of-a-kind miniatures, models, and dollhouses. I was approached by a friend of mine who inquired as to whether or not I could make a Snow White house. So I researched online and found the picture in the upper right corner, which appeared to be a Snow White house and decided to model mine after that. Uh, I also found a toy uh, model, the one in the upper right corner, which uh, looked like the other one, so I thought, well, it's what a Snow White house should look like. So I uh, began designing the Snow White and from uh, a Greenleaf uh, kit, which uh, I then proceeded to extensively remodel and redesign. Uh, the, uh, the original kit had a uh, square front and I decided to make a, a bump out front and also to make a, a porch After the design was completed, I decided that the roof should not be a normal uh, slab roof, but I decided to use warbla and uh, cover it with uh, coconut fiber, which is what you see here. The uh, beams are uh, half inch by half inch uh, balsa wood and uh, stained dark. Uh, the outside of the house is uh, plaster, uh, ceiling plaster, as is the inside. The uh, chair, the uh, beds uh, I had to hand make because there's no such thing on the internet as dwarf beds. So they were carved out and then I purchased uh, very tiny letters from I believe Etsy, I think the letters were an eighth of an inch tall and uh, proceeded to install them on the beds. Of course, Snow White and the Dwarfs, those were fairly read readily available on the internet and just had to find them. I made a wonky clock out of several different pieces and that was quite a challenge. The chairs and table were also handmade. They had to be carved individually and uh, uh, fashioned so that they approximated the size of the dwarfs. The covers for the beds, again, I had to manufacture those using just regular cloth bought online and the pillows as well. The furnishings for the dwarves I thought would be sparse as they themselves were sparse. Uh, and uh, of course you had to have a little bathroom, some place where they could perform their functions. The warbler, of course, is laid over the beams and sheets and then uh, uh, heated using a, uh, well, I used a hair dryer, to be honest, using a hair dryer just to warm them so that it, they conform to the uh, shape of the, uh, the beams that I had manufactured. The fireplace is uh, Forma clay and uh, that wasn't very uh, difficult to make. Uh, the um, tiles, the fireplace tiles, are just uh, gray stones, which were purchased from uh, miniatures.com. Uh, I manufactured the little wood spoon that you see there. Uh, the rest of it was just little items that were bought online. I had to cut the opening for the door in the front. Uh, that was. Uh, uh, 
unique and uh, trying to get it to uh, fit right. Getting the, uh, the door uh, frame was a challenge. It had to be done in two pieces using a scroll saw. All the other pieces, uh, uh, the little frogs, the bird bath, they were, again, they were readily available online. Uh, I, I don't believe I had any trouble locating them. It was just a matter of get, getting to them. I made the shutters individually out of uh, a one eighth inch square uh, balsa wood and they cut out the hearts. The uh, door, uh, I used uh, uh, rawhide uh, leather for the hinges. Uh, I thought it would look very rustic and interesting. The dwarfs, what I did was I drilled little holes in the, their feet and then uh, drilled a hole, a corresponding hole in the, the base and put a toothpick in the bottom of their feet so I could lift them in and out, uh, rearrange them if I needed to. Uh, but the condition and position that they're in right now is where I thought it looked pretty good. I made the uh, little wheelbarrow, again, out of uh, one eighth inch square uh, balsa wood. Um, I found a picture of a wheelbarrow that appeared to be rustic and the kind that the uh, dwarves would use online. And so I modeled it after that. For the most part, uh, the project was uh, fairly difficult, especially designing the front porch uh, bump out, the extra room, if you will, and, and the, uh, the little uh, porch extension, that was, a, that was a challenge. This is a picture of the house without the uh, warbler ceiling. Um, I used uh, lights, which were uh, battery operated. Uh, I like those and uh, I, I use them on most of my projects. Uh, the, you can fasten the uh, little battery compartment directly to the, uh, the house without having to have any external lines or wires getting in the way. Uh, running them up and just wrapping them around. The beams worked really well. And the, uh, the again, the, pa the battery uh, holder itself, if you will, that was just uh, used double back tape to attach to the uh, frame of the, uh, of the house. This is another picture looking down uh, from the front of the house without the, the uh, roof uh, at the beds and at the uh, the front porch that was took a little uh, design ingenuity to get it to work right this is the uh, roof uh, the, looking at it from the front off the house with its uh, coconut fiber uh, covering And the 
this would be the rear of the uh, roof uh, looking at it. This is the underside of the roof and the lighter area is what the part that goes over the porch. It was a interesting project. It was uh, reasonably difficult, uh, but a lot of fun as, as most of these things are. So uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to watch my channel. I would uh, offer to you that uh, I am also a musician and my singer and I have a channel called the Weary Kind channel in which we've recorded some songs. It's on uh, YouTube, and I would really appreciate it if you would go to the Weary Kind channel and listen to some of our music. Besides uh, being a musician and a miniaturist, I write books. And I have uh, currently written uh, nine books, which are on uh, Amazon. Uh, they're, of course, available for purchase if... Uh, you would like to do that. The books are, uh, uh, one book is a, a biography called uh, Children and Idiots. Then the second book that I've written is called uh, Where Did Dead People Go? And it's my thoughts on the year after. And then there's a seven volume set, which is called The Greeter. And The Greeter is a fellow who is in heaven and he gets to return to Earth where he gets himself into a variety of sticky and somewhat uh, dangerous situations. It's a, it's a combination of science fiction, fantasy, and uh, uh, religion thrown in. So anyhow, thanks for watching my channel, and please come back and watch the rest of my YouTube videos. Thank you.